This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. The man who served five presidents, dessert, Chef Roland Mesnier on this edition of Conversations. For over a quarter of a century, Chef Roland Mesnier has satisfied the sweet cravings of five presidents, their families, numerous guests, and heads of state. The French-born Mesnier was hired as the White House executive pastry chef in 1979 by First Lady Rosalind Carter. Mesnier's service to Carter, Reagan, Bush, Clinton, and Bush 43 would make him the longest-serving White House chef to date. Among his many accolades, he's a member of the Chocolate and Pastry Hall of Fame. Since retiring in 2006, Mesnier has kept himself busy as a speaker and author. He has written several books, including All the President's Pastries, 25 Years at the White House, a memoir. His latest is A Sweet World of White House Desserts. We're pleased to have Chef Roland Mesnier on this edition of Conversations. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jeff. The pleasure is all mine. I always, uh, this is my first visit in Pensacola. Well, welcome. And thank you, thank you. And I'm so happy to be here and uh, we'll enjoy a couple of great days here in yeah, the city. I think, I think you're going to have a wonderful time. Take me back. W when did you first become interested in cooking? Well, you know, at, uh, I was from a big family in France. Uh, nine children, wow. a very poor family. You know, we, we grew, we ate what we grew and what we raised. We, there was no money to go to the store. And you know what amazed me today with all these fads in food, like the, the uh, organic, and I, look, I lived it as a kid, about gardening and growing stuff. So they amazed me today in this country when they finally discover that you put a seed in the ground and something will grow out of that. <laughs> it's a pretty that, neat concept. That thing is a miracle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, you know what, when I was four years old, I was doing that. <laughs> I know all about this. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, this is to bring another thing here. I was a little bit uh, amazed when the White House went into doing a garden and then they publicized it like nobody ever did a garden before. So, you know, I had my thought on that, you know, especially when the first year, uh, they say they were growing rhubarb, and the first year they produced 250 pounds of rhubarb. And I know, as a matter of fact, to produce rhubarb, it takes at least three years, if it's not four years. But they were able to do it in two months. Can you imagine <laughs> what television can do these days? That's right. <laughs> so I was blown away by all these... Uh, Sweet lies, if you will. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. But I thought that was really strange that they would put something like this out there. I mean, gardening is the whole thing ever. Uh, I mean, uh, people used to survive on garden and, yeah. and raise their own animals to butcher, to right. eat. Right, right. That's what life is all about, by the way. <laughs> a piece of lamb don't come out of a plastic box at <laughs> Safeway or Giant. It's As right. you know, it has four legs and it runs around. Right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that was my family. You know, uh -huh. we... And in my family, I had already two other brothers that went into the... One had, was a bread baker and, and, and made his life uh, in, in his own shop, his own store. Mm -hmm. And another brother was pastry chef. Okay. So I happened to spend, when I was 12 years, you know, when I was 12 years old and 10 years old and 9 years old, and I was summer vacation, we didn't go to Cancun. <laughs> you know, we stayed, we were sent to go to work. Right, right. To bring money home. Right. Because we needed every penny we could right. earn. Right. Life was very different from today, but was great. If I had to do it again, guess what? I would do it that way. Do, do it it's exactly a healthy way. way. Yeah. It's a healthy way. So at age 12, I spent my summer vacation working for my brother who had a pastry shop. And you know, I was amazed when I came into the baking area and I saw him mixing doughs and things, you know, flour, sugar, yeast, and it was like chemistry to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Never seen anything like it. And then when the stuff went into the oven, you see it rising and the smell. When he would take his pastry out of the oven, you could smell it all around the corner. Right. Those days, 
food had a particular smell right. of goodness, yep. of making you hungry. Yeah. Now, I'm afraid today when I go to a store or to even a restaurant, I don't smell food. I smell Lysol, <laughs> the stuff they clean the floor with. What kind of restaurants are you going to? <laughs> well, I try to go to pretty good one, but I don't smell food anymore. Why is that? I, I, because there's no cooking going on. You know that. Most of the food today, I'm afraid to say, comes into the restaurant in a pouch. Yeah. It was cooked, maybe in China, <laughs> probably not, <laughs> but far away. Yeah, yeah. There's no cooking going on from this, from, but they will all tell you, oh, our food is made from scratch. It's not true. Half of it comes already made. They just, you know, play a little bit with it and in your plate, and that's what you get. Right. There's, uh, there's still a few good places. I'm not saying that they all do it, mm -hmm. but the majority, that's what they do. It's a kind of a lost art. It's a lost art. So I discovered the pastry business that summer. And I said, when I came back home, I told my mother, when I'm finished with school, that's what I want to do. And those years, school finished very early. Mm -hmm. At age 14, you were out of school. Either if you want to continue education, you had to go to college. Right. Cost, cost money. We don't have any money. But I said, no, I want to be a, a pastry chef, like my brother. My mother said, OK. So anyway, at age 14, on my birthday, from all days, my birthday, yeah. When I came for dinner in the evening at the table, my place was not set up. Instead, on my chair, there was a little cardboard suitcase with a string around it. And she said, son, uh -huh. in half an hour, there's a bus going through here. You're going to be on that bus, going to the big city. And here is the address of a place that is waiting for you. You have a three years contract ready to go in a pastry shop. You're going to be living there and work there. I'll be. That was my 14th birthday. Wow. There was no happy birthday to you. <laughs> there was no blowing candles. That was, it you was go a, to work. Off to work. Off to work. And that's how it got started. How did you get to the White House? Well, then again from there, I wanted to be a very well knowledgeable pastry chef. I wanted to know all the branch of dessert making, decoration. You know, in those days, like hotel and restaurant, used to have fantastic presentation, right. a lot of chocolate decoration, sugar work, ice carving. All that came under the pastry chef's job. Right. And I wanted to learn all that. So I started to travel because we had no cooking school those days. Right. Didn't exist. Right which I call them today country club because they do everything but teach you cooking. <laughs> it's another story. Uh, so I wanted to, I did big circle around the world and I end up here in America at the Homestead Hotel, a beautiful hotel, a beautiful resort in Hot Spring, Virginia, down South Virginia. Mm -hmm. This place is was built in 1766, so it's a very old resort. Of course, they have enlarged it. Wonderful place. And I love my job there. I absolutely loved it because we were still doing things the way it should be done, like making your menu every day according to the market, you know, and you could, you could dream up new dessert every day. Right. That's me. Right. Creativity. This is where the White House discovered me. Okay. Some White House staff. Okay. Come in there and uh, people that uh, knew the White House. And then I was told that uh, Mrs. Carter was looking for a pastry chef that I should apply. I was not too keen on that. You know, I said, no, I like it here. I really like it here, you know. And finally, uh, December 1979, I was, uh, I got a call from the secretary, uh, Mrs. Carter's secretary, if I would like to come for a tour and visit the White House. I said, yeah, I've never been there. And you know, I decided to drive, which is about four hours from where I was, down to the White House. And I was uh, those days driving a whole uh, Dodge Dart 
the avocado color. I said, matter of fact, everybody used to call my car the avocado. So they said to me, you're not going to go down the White House in the avocado, are you? I said, why not? They've never seen anything like it. Of course I'm going to go down there. And you know, those days I was fascinating because you could drive straight through those gates. And I park under the colonnade, right in front. Oh, wow. That was fantastic, you uh, know, no yeah. question asked. Just look at my driving license, okay, open the gate, go, you park over there. Came out of the car, went up a few steps, I was inside the White House. Oh, um, no. Yeah. Now, that was impressive. Yeah, I can imagine. Now, I start shaking. I was so emotional for me to be inside that house that I, I, I flash back quickly in my mind all those great leaders right. that walked through the same pass where I'm about to walk. I mean, Winston Churchill, Charles de Gaulle, and all those American president, and king, and queen, and, and here I am. So remember, I am from a very tiny village of France, 140 people. Uh, most of the people were farmers, except us. We were, my parents worked for the French railroad. So that was not exactly a uh, big time. Right, so right. To, be from, to be transported from there inside the White House, that is a tremendous, tremendous thing. I mean, I didn't know how to act. Yeah. I had no idea. The, I could feel the pressure already of the house. Right. I was transformed in a few minutes. I said, wow. Look, look at me, look where I am. I wish my friend could see me, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, from a small village of nowhere and here in Washington, D.C., inside the most powerful house in the world. Yeah. So that was, an ex uh, for me, that was really something that it's even hard to explain, to put word to it. Uh, Were you hired right away or did you have to go? No, no, then after that, I toured the White House, visited different the chefs in the kitchen, all that. And um, shortly after that, I was told that uh, Mrs. Carter wanted to see me. And you know, that day also, that particular day, they had Margaret Thatcher visiting the White House. Oh, OK. So they had all the ceremony in the garden. Uh -huh. And they asked me to go watch that, you know, even more impressive. Oh, I can imagine. All yeah. the, you know, the, 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 the soldier with the flag and the music and the... That was an incredible day, incredible day. And Margaret Thatcher right here. Yeah. That was my first really foreign dignitary that I see up close. Right. And then shortly after that, I was going to go home because it takes four hours to drive and the avocado is not very reliable, <laughs> remember? I got you. So I said, uh, they said to me, no, no, you have to wait. You have to wait. Wait for what? Just wait. So I was in an office waiting. And uh, an hour later, the, the fellow who was in that office said to me, Mrs. Carter wants to meet you. Now, that was the, for me, the, the top of the top because I've never met a first lady in my life. I've never met a head of states. What am I going to say to that lady? I was really uh, a little bit upset that I, I had no warning to right. that, you know, uh, to yeah. the effect. I wasn't dressed to meet the first lady. So... I met her, and believe it or not, she was the first really friendly and nice human being I met in the White House, Is because everybody right? was a little bit snobbish, snobbish with me, you know. So that was really a, a fantastic uh, thing that happened that day, when I got to meet Mrs. Carter, open her arm, call me by my first name, Roland, welcome to the White House, give me a hug. I said, this is the first lady of the land here, you know. And we went to a side room uh, for a little meeting with her secretary. And that's when she said, well, yeah, we're looking for pastry chef and talk a little bit about, a, you know, different thing. And we met for almost half an hour, which was quite a long time. Right. And at the end, she said, well, you know, if you get this job, what will you do for us? I said, well, Mrs. Carter, I will do a lot of low-calorie dessert, very pretty and dainty dessert. See, I knew I was talking. Mrs. Carter was a very pretty lady, you know. Mm -hmm. 
and very slim. So I said, oh, this is a trick question here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, the, my answer was correct, you know, because right. she said to her secretary, she said, this is the guy I want, and I want him as soon as possible. And, you know, I was awfully cute those days. That didn't hurt either, you know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. <laughs> so that didn't hurt. So uh, we, um, uh, but there was a big snag. And that was? Mrs. Uh, Carter's secretary, her name, uh, told Mrs. Carter, said, that's fair and good, but Roland is not an American citizen which is a big no-no. Right. Normally, you can't get a job in the White House if you're not an American citizen. And Mrs. Carter simply replied, I want him, and I'll take care of him. That's it. That's the man I want. So I went home with a job. Be... So my wife was a little bit surprised. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> when I came home, said, we're packing for D.C. And we made it to the White House. And... Um, Surely, uh, uh, shortly after that, one morning I was at my desk, my table working, right, right. always full uniform, hats and all. This dude from nowhere come and tap me on the shoulder and he said, take off your hat, there is a black limousine outside the kitchen door, get in, and I'll be right there. That's it. No, nothing, didn't tell me anything, no instruction, no idea what we're going to do took me downtown to some offices, and uh, there was a fellow behind the desk there and uh, started to ask me all about the American government, the Supreme Court. The, I, I said, man, I don't know nothing. <laughs> I don't know what you want. I have no idea even why I'm here. <laughs> he said, well, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get irritated with you. You should know some of the stuff here. I know, I don't. He said, do you know the president is? Sure, he's President Jimmy Carter. I feed him every day. I know his name. <laughs> Good, you passed the test. <laughs> I said, I had no idea I've been tested for anything. I don't know if that's first news to me. Get back in the car. So that car took me to Alexandria, Virginia, to the courthouse. Even more surprise, I arrived there. There's somebody there with a Bible. And uh, put your uh, hand on the Bible and repeat after me. First, I asked this lady, I said, who died? She said, no joke, just do what I'm telling you to do. So I did that, and at the end she said, congratulations, you are an American citizen. <laughs> the rest is history. You know, I always say only in America. <laughs> only, only in America. Only in America. <laughs> only in America. Let me, I've got about 10 minutes left, and I want to get your stories on, I want, I want to run down yes. each of the presidents yes. that you yes. worked with. Yes. S let's start with, with Jimmy Carter. Yes. So tell me about Jimmy Carter and the, and the Carter family from a, from, from a dessert yes. standpoint and an eating standpoint. What the, are they like? The Carter family was wonderful. They were great people. I get very much hurt when people criticize President Carter unjustly, really. It's easy to criticize, you know. But he's, he's a great man. Mrs. Carter, a great lady. And uh, they did like uh, very much all the dessert I was doing for them, you know. But there was one little thing there. You know, Mrs. Carter had brought with her from Georgia the recipe of a cheese ring uh -huh. that the order was to have it on every buffet, every time. That was their signature Carter dish. And the recipe, you had to use the stinkiest cheese you could find, mix them together, <laughs> put some anchovy in it, and all sorts of different things. And then you made a, a ring, build it like a ring inside of a mold, and then you unmolded it. And in the middle, you put strawberry jam. Now, the funniest thing, Mrs. Carter always checked if the thing was on the table. It was, but nobody ever touched it. <laughs> nobody ever ate it. <laughs> so what we did, we just put it back into the freezer and bring it back out every buffet. I think the same cheese ring lasted four years. <laughs> and if you would go to the White House today, you may still find one somewhere in the freezer. It's funny. But nobody there telling Mrs. Carter that people really did not care for the cheese. You know. <laughs> but but anyway, then after that, we have the Reagan's family that mm -hmm. came in. Now, everything changes tremendously. Mrs. Uh, Reagan is a total perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Everything had to be perfect, from tablecloth to soup to nuts to flour to everything, and dessert, of course. She needed to have a sample dessert uh, made every time, sometimes more than one. I remember this particular time 
when uh, we did four desserts for her and still did not accept any. Wow. And we were two, two days away from the state dinner, 140 people. And I was really uh, very depressed. I didn't know what to do for her. And uh, so after showing her dessert number four that she turned down, a few minutes later, she called me in the kitchen. To call me, uh, uh, excuse me, up to the uh, private quarters. And then she said, I know what I want, Roland. So she described the dessert that she wanted. A very complicated dessert. By the way, it's in my book, in my new book. You'll see it in here. Those are baskets made of sugar, filled with sorbet and fresh fruit. Decorated with sugar tulip, all that has to be made by hand. Okay. A lot of work. As I said, it's in the book, you can say. So I told Mrs. Reagan, I said, this is a fantastic dessert, Mrs. Reagan, but I only have two days before the dinner. So she turned around and smiled at me and said, Roland, correction, you have two days and two nights. <laughs> <laughs> so I click my heel and turn around and say, thank you, Mrs. Reagan, will do. And I made it happen. Uh, and t I tell you, it was a huge success. Uh, I was so proud of that. Uh, and then shortly after that, then uh, President Bush came in. George H.W. Bush. Yes, again, great family. They were all great to me, let me tell you, because they knew I, I went over mm -hmm. what was requested for me to do. And uh, President Bush and Mrs. Bush were fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Now, Mrs. Bush was an extraordinary, extraordinary first lady. She was very simple, down to earth. But don't tangle up with her, because you lose. <laughs> she was so witty and quick with the tongue and very smart, <laughs> you know. And I remember one time Prince Charles was going to, Prince Charles, was going to have dinner with them. He was still a single guy. Right. And then they wanted to do uh, fresh tuna on the grill for him. And uh, the, the menus read, tuna à la bouche, mean bouche right. way. Yeah. We had a new executive chef. He said, he come to me, he said, what, is, what the hell is tuna à la bouche? <laughs> I said, I don't know. You need to ask Mrs. Bush. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, Mrs. Bush was told to come down the kitchen and tell so she came down. She said, give me the tuna. Give me the mayonnaise. Give me some lemon. Turn on the grill at 400 degrees. I'm going to show you what tuna a la bouche is. She take the knife herself. She was dressed up to the core. She just made a speech uh -huh. in the East Room upstairs. Cut a big piece of fish, went into the mayonnaise, slap it on one side, slap it in the other, put lemon juice and threw it on the grill. She said, five minutes on each side. It's going to be black like charcoal, but the prince is going to love it. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> he was so happy with that. Everybody talk about that tuna. <laughs> so that's tuna a la bouche for you. <laughs> Try it. You will like it. <laughs> I'll have to do that. And uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton? Then Bill came in uh, and Hillary Clinton. Now, Bill Clinton had a lot of um, allergy. He was allergic to uh, sugar, flour, and chocolate. So that left very little for me to any love's dessert. Mm. So I, I was able to create a lot of dessert for him that he absolutely loved. But that was not easy to do, let me tell you. I was really, I had to struggle and, 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 and reinvent dessert, really, you know. Yeah. And I will, I, I will always remember, uh, my job was to make sure he got the right thing to eat. Always the right cake. But he didn't always listen. <laughs> I remember at this particular time we were having, uh, we were having a wedding in the White House. Friends, no, no big uh, state wedding, and uh, they had asked me to make uh, the wedding cake of three different flavors: chocolate, vanilla, and a carrot cake, because he could have carrot cake. You see, yeah. so here he, I was cutting the cake. Here he comes, and uh, he said, "Give me a piece of chocolate cake." I say, "Sir." You can't have chocolate cake, but I've got, I don't want carrot cake. I said, give me a big piece of chocolate cake. <laughs> I said, yes, sir, you're the president of the United States. There you go. I hope you enjoy. And, you know, I could always tell when Bill had been a bad boy. Uh, I eat something he shouldn't because his eyes will get all puffy, you see. <laughs> and I knew, said, Bill, 
also, you know, I can tell even these days uh, when he have something to eat that he's not supposed to have. I got about two minutes left. George then w. George w. came in and Mrs. Bush, mm. very nice people too, and they love mm. great dessert. And uh, pre President Bush uh, really is the most impatient man I've ever seen. Really? Before he sits down, the food has to be on the table, you know what I'm saying? And he is very, very fast. And on his birthday, I remember every time we did a special cake for him. And then he wanted his butter pecan ice cream. And of course, the ice cream, we brought it last, you know, because we didn't want it to melt. He would go ahead of you. When you came through the door, he picked the ice cream with his hand and put it on his plate to, <laughs> to be ready to eat right away. So that was President Bush. But they were all a lot of fun and great, great people. I've been so blessed and honored yeah. to serve all these presidents. Did you have a favorite? They all, I tell you, it was, that would be tough for me because they treated me really, really well, very nicely. Mm -hmm. So when I, you know, the, the saddest thing in the White House is to do your goodbyes right. when the term were over or if they didn't get reelected. Right. Those were the saddest. That was like a funeral, yeah. like a funeral. And you know how much you love those people because you were close to them. Yeah. Remember, we served them, we were close to them. We got to know everybody in the family, including the pets, yeah. you know, and, and, and everybody else in the family. So that's why we were so close. And for me, they were the nicest, every single one of them. And to have, uh, it's, it's like us asking a mother, which one of your kids yeah. is your favorite? I couldn't do that. Yeah. But I have enjoyed every family. They all were very different. They all represented challenges to me, yes. Right. But it was hard for me to leave this, this job, let me tell you. I can imagine. When I, had to, when I took the decision to retire, it was a very hard uh, thing for me to do. I you can know. imagine. Well, we are out of time. These days you are traveling, speaking, writing books. Your latest book, uh, The yes. Sweet World of White House Desserts. Yes, sir. Best I reinvented myself after the White House. Okay. And you have a website? Yes. Yes, chefrollen.com. Okay, and folks. Chefrollenmessnier.com. Okay, and folks can see some of the pictures and. Pictures when I speak, they can hear me. I have a wonderful story, a lot more story. We could go for another hour. Oh, my goodness, we could go to uh, <laughs> several days. Well, I have a lot of material, you know. Uh, this is why people love to hire me to speak. Right. Because uh, for different groups, different things. I do also a lot of fundraising for charity. I, I even uh, work all the way to China, believe it, for wow. the biggest Chinese food firm that, em that employs 72,000 people. Wow. I'm out of time. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Nice, nice to be with you, Jeff. Thank you very absolutely, much. Absolutely, absolutely. Chef Roland Mesnier. By the way, you can see more of our conversations online at wsre.org slash conversations. I'm Jeff Weeks. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Take great care of yourself. We'll see you soon. Support for this program is provided in part by these corporate sponsors. And by viewers like you.